uh, on Wally and OKHTTP, uh, with which you can build an Android application. Let me send the, set the agenda of it. Uh, my agenda is, after, after this talk, you should be able to go back and integrate Wally as well as OKHTTP in your Android application, or you should be able to develop it. So we'll be starting, first of all, with Speedy and Google Space Speed, which are the two uh, Google developed uh, uh, server-side programming uh, or modules for our Apache servers, Nginx, and other servers, which will speed up your website at the server end. And the, the Speedy is, is a different kind of uh, protocol which Google has come up with, which requires special implementation at the client side as well. So for that, we'll be talking about OK HTTP library, uh, which is an HTTP client which supports Speedy and is developed by Square. Then we will be reviewing how you interact with your network in an Android applications using default uh, Android HTTP libraries. Uh, we'll be just overviewing them. Then we'll be go going back into how high-level libraries have been built and uh, what is the boiler code, code has been built upon it. <coughs> then we'll deep dive into Wally, which is just presented in Google I.O. in May 2013 which is a high-level networking API, which includes the best practices, caching, and all. Uh, we'll also go, go through a code walkthrough of how you, should, you can implement it direct, straight from downloading it from GitHub and, and integrating in your application. Then we'll compare some issues we, which you might face when you are trying to uh, communicate with Wally in HTTPS, and how do you overcome that. Then we'll also Compare it with very sim one very similar library called Iron, uh, which has been developed by Kaushik Dutta, and we'll compare the two. What is the, uh, what's the difference between them? And finally, we'll be summarizing it and concluding them. <coughs> so let's get back to the Speedy. As I said, Speedy has been developed by Google as a protocol to be interacted and to make your web faster. HTTP was when the blurb was not meant to do all those crowdsourcing and activities which uh, people are interacting with, like uh, uh, the user itself is generating content on the internet. So, uh, and, and your browser has a limited number of connections. It doesn't, it cannot open more than six parallel connections to your same website. So when you are com communicating to your uh, a server in multiple uh, instances, uh, there is a limit and there is a serialization which is happening. What Speedy tells us that uh, I will sit between your uh, application layer uh, and presentation layer. I'll be sitting beneath your HTTP layer and uh, will be, t will be uh, protocoling them and sniffing them, like analyzing it, what to do, what to do, and make it faster. How does it make faster? It, first of all, comp uh, automatically provides free compression. Like, it's a transparent gzip compression support. Your, all your requests and responses uh, are, will, will be compressed. Secondly, you, uh, to solve that multiple parallel connection problems, it, uh, it automatically gives you an architecture of multiplexing. So using a single thread, you can handle multiple requests. And it also allows you to do, prioritize those things. So this is one of the greatest benefits so, so which, uh, with which you can remove your CDNs. So you don't have to maintain different CDNs to host your images, JS and CSS and you, you are maintaining five different CDNs and trying to distribute your uh, page load time along those different hosts. Uh, with Speedy, you can just call them up and Speedy will take care of it uh, within the same number of connections. And because it is uh, sitting beneath that, uh, your HTTP layer, when you are giving you a response back, it actually analyzes the response which is getting back to the browser and, or to the, to the requester and it can read what are the future requests going to be made. And instead of browser asking for the request, it, it, can, it has a power to automatically push content to the server. So if your speedy is installed on the server and you are doing a get request of a website, the speedy can intelligently say that, okay, after this get call of a website, I have a JS and CSS to be pushed. I can do that intelligently without browser being asked for it. So because it's... Uh, it is a different protocol, and uh, it allows streaming and all. And to be frank enough, 
it actually powers up your HTTPS. As an Android user or a mobile user, we are very, very performance oriented, and we do not want to use HTTPS because it, it adds an extra layer. But with Speedy, you will be able to do it faster. And there are a whole lot of browsers which support Speedy. In fact, there is a plugin or add-on on Firefox if you search on the internet, which, which, which can tell you that which site is using Speedy and which site is not. So which is Speedy compliant because the browsers are already accepting Speedy. So these are the few more tech companies which accept Speedy, which are already built on it, and it, it has been proven technology. <clears throat> the next thing was uh, what uh, comes to a mind when you're developing a website for, for mobile specific uh, is how, how do you optimize your uh, touch site or whatever request you, you want to make. So here, Google's page speed also comes up. It says that, okay, Speedy gives, gives us all of these features, but what about, I still want to combine my JSS and CSS, and images, I want to make them sprites. What does it say is that it, the optimization of your website keep that concern separate from your development? And it provides out-of-the-box implementation just the way like Speedy does. Google Space Speed can sit on your module on Apache, and, and through the network, it can uh, request all, all the, uh, and it can analyze all the requests and combine your images. Not only combine and do the minification of the code at runtime, but it can also control your image sizes and uh, <coughs> resizing of them. So if I'm, I'm on a tablet, I can call for a 3 MB of an image, but if I'm on a smartphone which has a lower resolution, I can, I can call that same image with a different parameter, so say that they degrade the quality to 30%, and I can get a, uh, probably 500 KB or 200 KB of that image, <laughs> the same 3 MB image. So I can control the real-time images, uh, which otherwise I have to create a copy of them, keep it in my server, create a different logic to it. And lastly, it has not only image control quality, it has 40 plus configurable optimization filters which will help you optimize your website. Yeah. <clears throat> so how do you implement them? They sounds complicated, they can achieve a lot of good things, but Google's page speed is much more easier to implement. It comes in three flavors. One is module which, can, which you can install it on your servers. It's an open source code, both. So you can install all those uh, filters which will be uh, sitting on your Apache. Or it, you can use it as a service. Let's say you don't have your domain name and you, you don't have the control and access to your server directly. Then uh, you can use them as a service. They will be using, using your website, routing it through a pro, uh, proxy servers, and it will be out of box implementation. Or you can use their SDK to be used to their APIs as a web service calls. So in a nutshell, let's summarize that the, here is your server which is running either Apache or Nginx or Jetty or NodeSpeedy. All you have to do is either uh, compile it yourself and deploy, or you can use ModSpeedy. Uh, they are the pre-compiled pre, pre modules, which will, uh, you just install them. Go to these websites, which are beneath uh, modspeedspeed.com or chromium.org that's speedy. You will be able to uh, get all the tutorials and steps how to install them. And it's very simple. Now let's talk about OK HTTP. What does OK HTTP does? So before OK HTTP, I like to know, tell you that in Android, if you want to communicate to the network, there are two ways you can communicate. One is it comes, it, Android SDK comes with Apache HTTP client, which uh, supports on Fro Plus. Another one is HTTP URL connections, which is uh, Android, uh, Java.net, Android HTTP <laughs> URL connections, which is, which is supported after Gingerbread Ginger Plus. What OK HTTP says is that okay, I'm similar to those Apache HTTP client. I'm built in Java, so you can also use on any of the Java applications. And it's robust and efficient than Apache HTTP client or HTTP URL connection. How it is efficient? So um, it definitely supports speedy protocols. Uh, so that uh, uh, you can uh, make your network calls faster, easier, multiplex them. If Speedy is not installed on your server, still OK HTTP is faster because it uses connection pooling. Connection pooling actually reduces your latency and optimizes your Android bandwidth. 
uh, or the threading concepts. It supports transparent ZZIP co compressions. It also uh, do. Uh, it also has a, a response caching like an Apache HTTP line or HTTP UL connections has. And one thing I like is, it, on a mobile network, it's very hard to develop uh, 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 network error-prone sites. So you might be in a faulty network. You might be having a fail. Uh, fail HTTP connections or proxy servers. So it automatically recovers from them. And if it is an IPv4 and IPv6 failover, so it can attempt an alternate address. <clears throat> so let's say how it is implemented. Let's see how it is implemented. So once you download the web uh, OK HTTP code, you build a jar out of it, and it, it supports Apache HTTP OK HTTP Apache client uh, uh, compliance, where you can port your Apache HTTP client, or it, it has own OK HTTP client for HTTP UL connections. So how do you implement it? Is just create a client out of it, OK HTTP, and just do client.openURL, and the HTTP URL connection instance will be returned. And then you are good to go to port your applications, because test all of you are already using it, and it's a it follows the same standard protocols. <clears throat> so let's now look at that. To how does Android applications are, uh, uses to communicate with the network? The main thing is, uh, on your UI thread, you are not able to communicate with the network directly. It has to be in an async manner, as we all know. So, it, uh, so one thing, uh, when, it, when it strikes, like, OK, I have to make an async HTTP call, because uh, the UI is, thread is not allowing me to block it. So I'll, I'll show a loader, and in the background, I'll create a thread. So hence, the first implementation it started was <coughs> threads. Then handlers came into picture. And then async task uh, was introduced by Android. But the problem with async task are when your screen is rotated, let's, let's, let's say from portrait to hence landscape mode, your application restarts, or the activity is recreated, sorry. If your activity is recreated, your async task, if spawning from on start or on create, will be called again. And there is no way you can cancel your old async task which have already spawned. So your old async task is already running. You are, for the same request, you will be spawning a new async task, and your old async task will be updating the old UI and not the present UI which has been shown. To counter this, problem, loaders have been introduced. So there are cursor loaders and uh, uh, async task loaders, uh, which takes care of rotation mode. But still, uh, after this, there is a lot of boilerplate code to be written. You need to handle request. Let's say that I have spawned two, three simultaneously requests. Now, uh, if the second request comes before the first request, how do I handle it? All those async requests and responses has to be written. So what is the problem? Problems are all the network requests which I am spawning in my applications happen serially if I have not designed it properly. And there will be a uh, rotating screen, as I just described, will actually reload everything, and your, all the async tasks will be recreated. There will be no default cancellation of the thread. So if, I, if the user has switched and canceled the activity or hit a back button, I'll not be able to uh, properly manage my threads and response which I have created. <coughs> Pausing an activity doesn't pause the async task. So it's, it's a similar thing, because it's an async task which is running in, into your background, and it's different from your activity life cycle. So you'll not be able to do it. And there is no mercy on image loading, because image loading is the one where uh, uh, you just cannot uh, put source equals to image URL, you'll have to download the bit image, can create a bitmap out of it, and render it into image view. And caching of the image loading has, uh, is another problem in Android applications. So, uh, there, no <coughs> so there is no out-of-the-box caching implementations for all the network requests, which you'll have to design it for yourself. <coughs> so, to overcome all these things, people have tried to buy, uh, identify all, all, all these high-level requirements, which you have to re rewrite again and again, 
for every Android application. So uh, I, here I, have, I will be pre uh, describing the ones which is developed by Square. Uh, one is OK HTTP, it's a speedy client. One is Picasso, it's a very good library for image processing and image, not image processing, it's for image downloading and uh, using the image cache. But uh, to resize and uh, do image operations, they have introduced another third library called Polexor, which is a Thumbwork client for image processing. And there is a retrofit, which is a REST client for it. But think of it, you, you, uh, except for image processing, at most of the tasks Android does, does uh, when it communicates over the network, it communicates through JSON, it communicates through images, it downloads images, or it, it never, you will never see an app which only do, it does image gallery. It, you will have to have a retrofit and Picasso together if you want to use these uh, applications or boilerplate codes. So in Google I.O. this year, Ficus Kitpatrick, uh, if he is an engineering lead in Android team in Google, uh, has developed Volley, which is a same high level framework, which you can say is a group of all these things, uh, uh, like anything which is communicating over the network. He has developed uh, best design practices and frame plugin and customizable framework, which he can, you can implement. And uh, it is being used by Play Store. Other uh, uh, applications which are out there are there are many boilerplate outputs like Iron, which we'll be just touching over. We'll not be discussing Universal Image Loader, which is one of the good libraries for uh, managing your galleries and lots of images and thumbnails. RoboSpice is another ima uh, image processing or image downloading library, which uses background service as a concept, which I'll not recommend because uh, background service, the purpose of background service is very different. You, uh, the, the activity spawning a background service task doesn't make sense. <coughs> At least. So let's come to Wally. Back to Wally. So we, as we have just described, uh, <coughs> Wally is a boilerplate code for best design practices to be used while communicating your Android application over the network. It uses its own best design practices, caching solutions, common code for performing all the network requests. It doesn't say that okay, this is for images, this is for JSON, this is for XML, or whatnot. So it has simplified all your request and context management. It has done out of, uh, it is, it, it's, it supports all these formats or anything, and it has a boilerplate code for even the authentication and auth tokens you will be needing for most of the account integrations things. And yes, Wally is being used by Play Store app, which is the biggest app being used with every phone. So it's proven that uh, uh, it's not a concept or a project, it is, it is stable library code. <clears throat> so what are the advantages of Wally? Let's first look at it. So what Wally does is it, 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 it keeps your network request in a request queue and uh, schedules them automatically in a round robin fashion. So you don't end up spanning n number of threads together. It does provide you implementation or, or a framework where you can extend and provide disk and memory based implementation of caching. In May when Wally was released, when I took a checkout, there was a bit in memory bitmap caching implementation, which we which we have just removed which uh, in the present checkout and we and only the uh, interface has been remain uh, has been remained just to showcase that there is a customization capability and you should customize your <coughs> in-memory uh, image caching if you want to do it. There is a cancellation request API where you, uh, where when you have spawned a request for a network, you can always cancel it. You can, uh, you can do a cancel all or you can do a cancel filter. And there is a powerful customization capabilities like uh, we'll be just in replacing their HTTP stack from uh, HTTP or URL connection or Apache client support, which Wally provides by default with OK HTTP. Then, uh, yes, it does support a lot of good debugging and tracing tools, and it can be handled a highly comp uh, high resolution uh, images, f uh, and it can catch your out of memory exceptions, which even Picasso fails to create thumbnails if. Uh, if given a high resolution images. So 
if I read a blog where they were doing a comparison between a Wally image processing and Picasso image processing, and they were saying like, when high resolution images are provided, Picasso just goes out of the memory and fails to load the thumbnails, but Wally does it very beautifully. So let's see how it is implemented. So they, it's, it's our structure that uh, you create a request queue and you keep adding your network request into the queue and it will, it will check for the cache first, it will, it will do this image, uh, if it's a cache mesh, then it will, it will go into a network request dispatcher where it will schedule the network request and it will come back and it will give, give back. The way you, you implement it is create a request queue object here, uh, as in the first line it's created, and then you create a new request queue uh, calling new request queue. Uh, here is the below example for JSON request. So, uh, so you can, so there is a request interface which provides get, put, sub, and other HTTP methods. So uh, for a, a JSON request, you can create a JSON request object where you will be passing the method, method name, parameters, uh, URL connections, and uh, the callback functions. So, so like in a do in background, you have a on post execute function. You you have a response listener and as as well as error listener, which you will implement. And when the response is get back, you those listeners will be called. How do you handle image views? So so you will not be able to in in your layout. You will, instead of image view layout uh, or tag, you will be creating a Wally network image view tag and uh, uh, you will be uh, spawning an image loader which wherein you will be passing the request queue as, as well as the custom caching implementation which of your image cache objects or interface which can be either disk based or bitmap based or whatever caching strategy, LRU caching strategy based implementation. So once the image loader is created, you can create it in your application start. So you don't have to create it in your each activity so image loader can be a static thing which you can create and keep it aside for all your image, image ta imaging tasks. And whenever you have to set a URL or load an image from a URL, you just call that image view dot set image URL, give the URL and the image loader path. Image loader will in turn pay, uh, check it in, in your image loader cache and if it is a mesh then it will go to your request queue and fetch the image and downloads it and gets back there. So below is the GitHub link for by Trey Robinson, which is a very, uh, which is a very good head start or a boilerplate code for using Wally, uh, starting with image processing or image uh, caching things. <coughs> so, uh, as I said, all the responses, Wally guarantees that all your responses will be delivered on the main thread. And if if you rotate your screen, and if the activities break, and there is a new activities which is spawned. Then Wally, Wally will say that okay, I have a, I'm, I have a tool which I can which can identify those uh, threads and which and will will be delivering those responses to those listeners. And if you cancel a thread, Wally guarantees that it, the response will not be delivered. So how do you cancel a request? So if your request queue is not null, you can for an activity. What I generally do is for each of the activity, I create a separate request queue, so that can, uh, on stop I'll just call them that cancel all. All you can do it if uh, uh, you can create a request queue for your all, all, all of your activities in an in a application context or application constant and manage them. But when, when you will do that, you will not be able to do a cancel all when, when an activity stops. So Wally does provide some implementations where you can either do a new request filter and cancel part of the request out of the request you have spawned or you can cancel particular requests which you have created individually. <clears throat> so let's see some code walkthrough. These are the snapshots which I just took yesterday night, uh, the, which says, which just means that the GitHub is active and people who have developed it are very active in this community and uh, they are keep updating and fixing the stuff. So what you do is, first of all, you check out the code, make a clone out of these two GitHub libraries OK, HTTP, and the Wally. So once you do a checkout, your code will look like this. So since it is a pom.xml, that means it, it runs on Maven.
So you will be combi uh, compiling a Maven and creating a, a jar out of it. Similarly, uh, with Volley, when you do, uh, the, it's an end paste. So when you compile Volley, you will be you will be getting a Volley dot jar in bin. When you do that, just copy paste it in your Android libs directory. So this is here where you will copy your OKHTTP and Wally jars. That's it. Now your code is ready and your app is ready to integrate all of these things. But, but before going to integrate all of, uh, let's say that uh, all of this Wally and OKHTTP, let's, let's look at the source code of Wally, what it, what it does. So you will be seeing two package folders. One is Wally and Toolbox. I'll highly recommend that spend at least one or two hours before jump starting into Wally and understand what each of this class means. Because there is a less documentation out there, so uh, it will be worth exploring each of the class and trying to interpret what it does. So when I started, I just looked into it and uh, I just looked into a couple of tutorials how, how they have looked. But then I started exploring what, what, what this Wally source code looks like. So if you see, there is an S, like let's say, I want to implement, uh, uh, let's first go through, the, through, through some classes. So let's say that there is an HTTP stack interface. It says that it performs HTTP request based on all the get posts and other parameters. And it is being implemented by two of the things. One is HTTP client stack, which is an extension of Apache HTTP client and implementation of it. So you will be seeing get perform request and all this, all such things here. Similarly, there will be a hurl text, which, which, which says that this is an implementation based on HTTP URL connection. So you will be uh, using this uh, uh, code for HTTP URL connections. Then there is a request queue object and there is a request object which is again an abstract class, which you can enter, uh, ex, uh, they have already implemented few of it like JSON request or image request kind of mm. things where uh, JSON request uh, has been further extended to JSON object request or JSON array, array request. And uh, uh, if you want your own XML and other requests to be spawned, you can do that as well. And then there are com a couple of image, uh, image loader and image request, which you can look into it. But let's let's say that how it is implemented. So once you have integrated it, the jars into it, all you have to do is uh, in your activity create a request queue object in the request queue called volley dot new request. This if but here we are trying to use OK HTTP. So we, we, we want to modify the HTTP stack. What we can do is uh, we can create our own HTTP stack which extend hull stack. Or you, if you want, you can implement your HTTP stack. So here I am extending hull stack because uh, OK HTTP, though it comes on both ways, I am more comfortable with HTTP URL connections. So what I have just done is create an OK HTTP client and in the constructor, I, I've just created an OK HTTP client. And uh, once the client is initialized, I will, I, I'm just spawning a method called create connection and, inst and instead of uh, HTTP URL connection, create URL, I'll just say client or open URL and done. This is the one line of class or code which, which you need to implement OK HTTP and integrate with Wally. So once it is done, you just say that, okay, this is my volley with OK HTTP stack. Hence, I will, this request queue will be using OK HTTP beneath the request which I have spawned. Now, another uh, problem which uh, I, I faced while I was integrating JSON request object was, uh, we had a the API uh, which, which supports authentication. So we have a auth, which needs to be passed on header with, with, as an authorization layer. But in this, you will, you will, you will find that the, you cannot pass on, on headers. So, 
So we created another JSON object request, or we, we created our own JSON request by extending the request. And uh, if you just uh, browse through the code, it does, because it's uh, ultimately an HTTP call, so it has to spawn some headers. So it does spawn some headers by uh, uh, sorry, headers. Yeah. So it does it does that by creating a map inside it, so which is there in the request object, but not in the JSON request which Wally has provided. So what we have done is in our own implementation of JSON request, we have created a header, and we have we are passing it in the constructor to create the headers and the maps. So in your JSON object request, when you say that here is my listener method and URL connection, along with it, I will be passing the headers itself. So once done, done that, uh, it's, so it's uh, quite a simple application which, uh, which, which, uh, uh, on a click of a button, it creates a GET service with a URL, and if it's a, uh, it constructs a JSON GET URL, and does say that, okay, this is my new JSON request, and here is my response listener, here is my error listener. If you go to my response listener, you can get the JSON response, and you can then convert it and talk to your UI threads, and similarly for the error listeners. Now let's see how it is image loading is done. So if I have not used Wally, I would have used image view. But let's uh, and I will. But with Wally, you will have to just put it in your layout that you are using Wally dot network image view. And this is a list item, so I have a list activity and adapter in it. In adapter, this code uh, say that. Uh, but before the, uh, this code, I, I'll just show you that in main application I have. I've defined my disk cache. So, uh, in your uh, main application, which 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 creates, you can create an image cache manager, and it, you can create an image loader itself here by specifying uh, your stuff. An image cache manager, it's uh, it's been copied from Trey Robinson, which uh, on the example of image GitHub library, which I have just shown. And it uh, handles it beautifully by extending uh, the image loader and doing the disk based caching of the image. Otherwise, with in your Wally uh, uh, GitHub, you will just you will just see that image cache interface is there. You'll not be able to see those implementations. Those implementations are left to the users. So you do you you create your image manager and your image loader is uh, created by calling your my image. Loader, my image loader is, hmm, oh sorry, uh, yeah. So when you uh, when you are done this, you just say that okay, here is my uh, image view which I I will just find, and I will just say that this is my. Uh, image which I want to fetch. This is the URL of the image and image cache manager dot get instance dot get image loader, and I'll I'll pass on the request which is which which will be a separate thread handling for it. <coughs> so that's pretty much it, and you will be integrate you will be able to integrate it, but when it comes to communicating through an HTTPS. Wally uh, has a trust part, uh, trust source involved. Uh, we'll, we'll just come to it. Yes. So uh, the HTTPS, if it's a, from a third party or a trusted manager in a certification authority like any web browser, you will be able to uh, gracefully use it. But if it's a uh, local host uh, configuration, you are you're hosting an HTTPS in local host machine, uh, and it's not uh, signed uh, in, from a trusted party, You'll have your self-signed certificates will be rejected. The solution is to modify that HTTP client again and provide your own trust manager. So the, uh, here is a very good tutorial on how to modify your HTTP client to implement your own trust manager, and then you will be able to use it. 
now now let's let's go back and look into how your uh, what happens when you do a request q dot add request it's uh, as as it is shown in the diagram it uh, first ca caches the and uh, added to the cache queue priority and your request is dequeued and checked for the cache dispatcher if it is a hit it it the response is sent back if it is a miss uh, you will be sent to a request dequeued network dispatcher which will manage your maximum number of threads and in a round robin fashion execute and process that order in terms of priority as well you can set the priority of your request of request and once the http transactions you you have got a response it will take it cache it as per the strategy which you have told and it will go back so these are the logs get printed when you call a uh, image or any network request so as you can see it's uh, add to queue then there is a cache queue cache queue hit expired queue network you take and network http complete pass complete cache return post response and done <clears throat> so now let's compare it with a very similar uh, library called ion uh, it's developed by uh, kaushik datta it's actually uh, the api is uh, inspired on the uh, uh, scale or, or an api logic and the patterns are inspired by picasso so if you are already using picasso for image loading and you want to mig migrate to something common so that you don't use uh, two different or three different libraries third party libraries yeah, you can use it and, and the background it uses uh, android async which is again developed by him in, in an nio based structure it's like a speedy trying to multiplex your request and not creating threads for many request and it supports it, it supports both cancellation operations caching and images but as compared to the wally it's uh, it's uh, wally is more customizable i will say it's beautifully written for on a request queue object and as you have just seen we we have changed the http client we have changed the image cache frameworks it's a network an interface driven library which you, which wally has been written and you can implement and extend and change it to whatever level you want and the cancellation management which of this wally is definitely better than any of the existing libraries in the uh which i have seen so far so let's conclude speedy is good because it multiplexes compresses and uh, automatically fail safe recovers your responses even if you don't use speedy okay http is uh, 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 does your connection pooling as well as uh, transpose zip networking request and android slips are basic and you need to write a lot of boilerplate code for that there have been libraries which uh, which does that but wally uh, does it very beautifully in a simple manner and uh, wally with okay http can be a very good strategy for your bootstrapping your android and as a boilerplate for all of your android applications which interact with the network and uh, you can actually look for other interesting applications or you can actually i like android async so there is a one more try which you can run and do a probably a benchmarking and in try and implementing android async of an io http client with wally thank you this concludes yes uh for for which library or otherwise google ok http plus uh, or google wally of android you will get these links for image processing also just type trey robinson and wally you will get a link for image image caching do you have any numbers uh, comparing ok http with wally and http client with wally as in how much improvement we can see uh i have not compared but uh, there is uh, on on the ok http on on the speedy website there is a, a video which which shows that uh, the network or the page request uh, for for loading a page which used to take 3 4 seconds ca ca is taking 1 second now no, without speedy there is say normal http communication of your in your api yes let's say the payload is of 300 kb or 400 kb in the json is 
is there any significant improvement which we can see indicating a uh, okay HKTP long term quality or if the application is not too heavy, like the payload is not one or two heavy, we can get away with that? Actually, it not depends on payload, it depends on number of threads you are spawning. So, if there is a large number of requests and you can do a, a load testing on it, then Wally and OKSTP will, will be better. But uh, I, have, I have not done the benchmarking yet. Wally supports speed. Wally supports? Does Wally support speed? Uh, Wally, Wally uh, by default, uh, has only two implementation HTTP URL connection and uh, oh, Apache client. So to support speedy, you need to integrate OK HTTP. So if, uh, if I don't, access, if I'm not accessing an API that's as speedy, so this is normal HTTP protocol. Hmm. So does it make sense to use OK HTTP as a HTTP layer or that use HTTP or another HTTP? No, so it still th does make a sense because it, uh, if speedy is not, uh, not available, it will do automatically your connection pooling. So if you have more than 10 threads and... But Wally also does does the same part, but uh, OK HTTP uh, takes care of it in a different manner, like uh, after after the Wally part. So, uh, so uh, there are other aspects which you can look for, like uh, failed failed handshakes or proxy servers. It can automatically recover out of it. You can do a it supports ZZIP and compressions. Wally is is a set of high level API which tells you okay use HTTP or use Apache HTTP client, but this is how you should use it. So yes, uh, all the request which Wally spends is independent of the life cycle of, life cycle of an activity, so if your activity is gone, your responses will still be running like an async task. But uh, it guarantees you that if you want to get a response on the main thread, it will deliver it. And if you cancel, it will definitely, the response will not be delivered. Hello? Hi. Uh, you mentioned the talk uh, in which uh, the developer at Google presented Wally. So he, uh, I also, saw the same talk, he mentioned something that uh, the HTTP URL connections classes are little buggy below 2.2 Android and, mm. and yeah, uh, yes. some, I, I don't remember exactly, he yeah. told, he, he specifically mentioned that Wally takes care of the bug of both HTTP client and URL connection itself in Wally, but <coughs> if you are suggesting okay HTTP, mm -hmm. so those considerations may not be there in OK HTTP. It might be there, I'm not very sure. I just okay. wanted to clarify it. Uh, yesterday I just read a blog on OK HTTP which, which mentioned the same thing, like older version of the HTTP URL connections, like which supported uh, gingerbread and froyo prior to those. Uh, these had some buggy uh, in, in that the, the responses were not, the stream was not getting closed properly and OK HTTP solves it. So I thought, uh, so if Wally has already solving this problem, OK HTTP has also taken care of this. Thank you. Uh, one more thing. Uh, yeah. this, this is, see, I'm a fan of uh, DroidFu. So I've been using uh, DroidFu for quite a long time. I've also used uh, Ignition framework. So is it uh, better, I mean, is Wally network, in, uh, image networking is better in, than DroidFu? Have, have you heard of DroidFu? I have not heard of DroidQ. I have compared it to Universal Image Loader, RoboSpice, and Picasso. And I found Wally to be outperform all of these three. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you all. I'll be available here. Thank you.